Thank you, Madam President and distinguished members of the court. It is an honor for me to stand here in front of you on behalf of the Republic of South Africa on this exceptional case. In extending our hands across the, the miles to the people of Palestine, we do so in full knowledge that we are part of a humanity that is at one. These were the words of our founding president, Nelson Mandela. This is the spirit in which South Africa acceded to the convention on the prevention and punishment of crime of genocide in 1998. This is the spirit in which we approach this court as a contracting party to the convention. This is a commitment we owe to the people of Palestine and Israelis alike. As previously mentioned, the violence and the destruction in Palestine and Israel did not begin on the 7th of October 2023. The Palestinians have experienced systematic oppression and violence for the last 76 years. On 6 October 2023 and every day since October the 7th, 2023. In the Gaza Strip, at least since 2004, Israel continues to exercise control over the airspace, territorial waters, land crossing, water, electricity, and civilian infrastructure as well as over key government functions. Entry and exit by air and sea to Gaza is strictly prohibited, with Israel operating the only two crossing points. Given that continuing effective control by Israel and over the territory of Gaza, Israel is still considered by international community to be under belligerent occupation by Israel. South Africa unequivocally condemned the targeting of civilians by Hamas and other Palestinian armed groups and the taking of hostages on the 7th of October 2023. And as again expressly recorded this condemnation, mostly recently in its not verbal to Israel on the 21st of, no of December 2023. That said, no armed attack on a state territory, no matter how serious, even an attack involving atrocity crimes can provide any justification for or defense to breaches to the convention, whether as a matter of law or morality. Israel's response to the 7th of October 2023 attack has crossed this line and give rise to the breaches of the convention. Faced with such evidence and our duty to do what we can do to prevent genocide, as contained in Article 1 of the Convention, the South African government initiated this case. South Africa welcomes the fact that Israel has engaged with the case in order to have the matter resolved by the court. After careful and objective consideration of the facts and submission put before it, as the parties to the Convention have intended, this hearing is, con is concerned with South Africa's request to the court for the indication of provisional measures and will necessarily have a narrow and particular focus. I invoke the words of Martin Luther King when he said, the arch of the moral of the universe is long, always bending towards justice. South Africa's case will be presented by a team of six legal counsels, comprising of Dr. Adila Asim, Mr. Tembega Ndugaitobi, Professor John Dugat, Ms. Blim Likron, Mr. Max Dupris, and Professor Vagan Lowe. Dr. Adila Asim, Senior Counsel, will provide an overview of the risk of genocidal acts in the perpetual vulnerability to acts of genocide. Mr. Tembega Ndugaitobi, Senior Counsel, will examine Israel's alleged genocidal intent. Professor John Dugat, Senior Counsel, will focus on the Prima Facie jurisdiction. Professor Max Duplices, Senior Counsel, will discuss the various rights currently under threat. Blini Crowell, King's Counsel, will provide, will present the argument of agency and potential irreparable harm. And Professor Vagenloo, King's Counsel, 
will speak on the provisional measures. I now request Madam President the court to call on Dr. Hasim. I thank you.